Edgar Mendez of the Milwaukee Neighborhood News Service joins us back in the studio. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me, Mitch. What are the laws regarding marijuana possession in Wisconsin? Well, in Wisconsin, the second marijuana possession charge is automatically a felony. The uh, the first marijuana possession charge is, is often just a citation, though, correct? Well, in the city of Milwaukee, and let me clarify that, I meant conviction, but in the city of Milwaukee, the police have the opportunity under the first offense to give a municipal citation, so basically a ticket for any offense that's 25 grams or less. Now, after that, it goes to the state, and upon the second state conviction, it's a felony, automatic. And so that first possession, even though it's a, a, a municipal citation, a, a ticket in essence, it does go on the person's record, and so police who would cite somebody for marijuana possession would find out that they already have a ticket under their belt and, and be required to charge them with a felony? Well, it's it's not exactly like that. If they already have the first uh, ticket, then it automatically goes to the state. That's and it's out of the police's hands. Goes, it's an automatic state charge. Well, and so that seems relatively straightforward. So, what was the disparity that you looked into? Well, the disparity is between who's getting these tickets and who's ending up with these uh, possession charges, state possession charges, and then ultimately felonies. And when you look at the ACLU's report, which was the impetus for this article. It's six to one nationwide, uh, five to one Wisconsin, five to one Milwaukee County. And when you get to the city of Milwaukee, it's uh, 5.5 to one. And that's when you even out everything for uh, the number of people. 5.5 5. 5 to one in terms of more African-Americans being charged than uh, than whites or other demographic groups? Than, than whites. And with that data, that's also not accounting for Hispanics, so they could also be counting towards the white total, and so it could be even greater disparity. Uh, there were people you spoke with who pointed, in contrast, to how marijuana laws are enforced in Dane County uh, versus Milwaukee County and the city of Milwaukee. What what picture do they paint? Well, in, in Dane County, and I don't, I think that a uh, a lot of people will say the same thing, that cops tend to look the other way. I mean, you're at a concert, they smell marijuana, they're, they're not going to ultimately always go and seek out these people and then arrest them. And of course, Dan, and we're talking Dane County, and that the reason we're looking at Dane County as a contrast is it's where the University of Wisconsin is. Right, they're dealing with the college population. I mean, what they were telling me what, when I talked to the state public defender is that these are college kids, so they really don't they don't want to put a blemish on their record. Is there evidence to back that up? Do we do we know for sure that there are people who could have been charged that that are not? Well, I think that if you look at Dane County statistics, they also have a racial disparity. But if you look at the number of, of total marijuana possession charges, the majority are, are originated here in Milwaukee. So how did we get here? How did, how did the things develop so that this is the way marijuana laws are written and enforced in uh, Wisconsin and Milwaukee? Well, I think if you want to look at the roots, you go all the way back to the war on drugs and how it began as, as a war on crack, but also included uh, drugs such as heroin and marijuana to becoming a war on any kind of drugs that are uh, prevalent basically in, in all, all facets, facets of society, but uh, were more targeted in terms of the enforcement in the inner cities. And, and you spoke with uh, the dean of the uh, criminal, uh, of the uh, school, He's the dean of what? The criminal justice program. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, why don't I have you? And you spoke with uh, you spoke with one expert at the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee about this, right? Right. I spoke with uh, Stan Stoikovich. He's the dean of the criminal justice program at UWM, and he kind of laid it out for me how how this drug war evolved into a war that overcriminalizes uh, marijuana, overcharges it, and also how it has devastated, how it's one of the contributors to this devastation in terms of uh, racial disparity in the prison system. So what is the upshot of the laws being enforced like this? Well, I think the upshot is is that it's contributing to this racial disparity. I mean, they're, it's churning out felons, and it, it's doing it in a, an unve uneven way. I mean, the laws are on the books for everyone, but as 
study after study has shown it's impacting African Americans more, and, and especially here in the city of Milwaukee, and racial disparity, I mean, it's no secret. There's been reports by the governors since the turn of the, the century. I mean, since the year 2000. Right. Well, and and you, uh, you I mean, you you talk with uh, you talk with a number of people who have been uh, charged under these uh, laws, and uh, you know they they concede that they didn't necessarily have a clean record to begin with. But I mean, you write about police being able to be in a neighborhood and identify people already on probation, right? Police know who's on probation, and that's who they look out for. So they're in th- these neighborhoods. I mean. Granted, these are high crime neighborhoods, and and that's why the police are there. But if you're already on probation, that's that's a mark against you. That gives the police more uh, impetus to pull you over, to check, to search you. Well, and, and you spoke with the Milwaukee Police Department in reporting the story. What was the department's take on the discretion their officers have and and how they use it? Well, that's that's what the officers told me. I spoke with Assistant uh, Chief James Harpole, and he said that well, they're they're giving out more possession arrests in these neighborhoods because they're they're patrolling these neighborhoods more and. When it comes to marijuana, it's not necessarily that possession of marijuana is 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 something on their radar, but they're looking at uh, I guess you would call it street level dealers. And and they say their officers really really don't have a choice that if uh, if they find somebody with marijuana on their uh, in their possession, they have to charge it. At least that 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 is the the story that they tell. Right, and then it will go to the district attorney, and and that's then it's in their hands. What sort of reform is being proposed in Wisconsin? Well, there's there's uh, Representative Sargent's proposal to legalize marijuana. That's uh, one thing that's on the books. Other than that, I know that Representative Barnes has been working to, I guess, decriminalize it, which would make anything uh, less than. 25 grams uh, a misdemeanor or a ticket and that's something that is occurring uh, around the nation Washington DC for instance is a municipality that recently enacted uh, legislation similar to that Uh, and so what attention is it drawing do you have a sense for whether uh, politicians in other parts of the state are uh, are paying attention to this at this point or it's an election year and and they're not (laughs) not really Uh, They've gotten minimal support, especially Representative Sargent, who's going for all-out le- uh, legalization. I spoke, I try, I asked the governor for a statement, and in, in terms of legalization, he said that's not something he's interested in or hears about. But when I put the question out again, uh, in terms of whether he thinks that possession of marijuana is overcharged, I didn't get a reply from him. Edgar Mendez, thanks so much. Thank you.